I want to bring in Senator John Barrasso, a Republican from Wyoming. Senator, good morning. Good morning, Chris. There's a lot going on on the Hill that I want to get to, but let me give you a chance first to react to the resignation of Pope John Paul. I'm sorry, the resignation, obviously, of Pope Benedict. Well, uh, you make a wonderful point as we discuss this because, of course, the, the Pope is in these issues infallible. So, of course, it was the right decision. But I think so much was generated by at the time of uh, John Paul II's illness. There was discussion of uh, should a Pope continue? And, uh, you know, as a doctor, I, I will tell you the advanced abilities to uh, help people stay alive so much longer uh, can have an impact. And I think it's much more important to have a, a vital individual there to, to carry on as Pope. So I think that the the Pope made what I think will now be a precedent-setting decision. I think there's no doubt about that, and a lot of people did discuss you are so right at the time of Pope John Paul with the advances in medical technology if they could continue to essentially live out their lives as Pope. So something we'll be discussing in the coming days. But I want to switch gears and talk to you about the State of the Union. Uh, Glenn Thrush writes for Politico that the speech will, and I'm quoting here, will be less a presidential olive branch than a congressional cattle prod. If that's the strategy. What do you think of it? Do you think that, that the time is, given uh, what most Americans see as a pretty intransigent in Washington, the time is right for the president to push hard? Well, you know, they always ask the question, the State of the Union is fill in the blank. And I think the State of the Union is strong, but the state of the economy is weak. We have too many people uh, looking for jobs and too many people who have given up looking for jobs. So I hope the president really focuses on jobs and the economy. He never mentioned the word jobs once during the inaugural address, never mentioned the word debt once during the inaugural address. So I hope the president says, let's get together, let's pe put people back to work. And if he wants to do that, there are two things he can do immediately. One is to approve the Keystone XL pipeline, and the other is to approve free trade with Europe. Well, as you know, um, there are reports out of the White House that that is indeed going to happen, that he's going to be focusing on the middle class, he's going to be focusing on the economy. There is a new poll out, Senator, from Quinnipiac. It shows more voters trust the president than Republicans in Congress to handle the economy, 47 to 41 percent. In fact, according to that poll, they trust him more on every single issue, the deficit, health care, gun policy, foreign policy. Does he have the upper hand? Well, I think that the people are looking for results, and they're not seeing it now. We have young people graduating from uh, college, Chris, who, uh, and the president talks a lot about education, which we all agree is important. They can't find jobs for which they've been prepared and educated. So the president now, I think this is about his 10th time that he's, quote, pivoting to the economy and to jobs. But this is like a broken record. He, he, he says it, and then he goes off to other things. This, this, the inaugural address, you know, it was about climate change, immigration, gun control, gay rights. He ignored the major issue on the minds of the American people, which is jobs in the economy. You're not suggesting you think he's going to do that, though, tomorrow? Well, I'm hoping that he does. I've have a, I'll have an editorial tomorrow calling him for to focus on jobs, things he can do to get people back to work. But it's not just more borrowing from China and spending more taxpayer money. The government doesn't do a very good job of doing that effectively or efficiently. We need to get people back to work in this country, and the president continues to take his eye off of that ball and focuses on just about everything but jobs in the economy. Well, That's the been Senate, his record. The Senate also has a number of jobs, and that is to a vote on a number of uh, positions for the president's candidate. One of them, of course, is Chuck Hagel. Your colleague, Lindsey Graham, has just said he will block the confirmation. How will you vote? Yeah, I plan to vote against uh, the uh, Chuck Hagel for Secretary of Defense. If anyone who's watched his testimony uh, saw a testimony that was weak and wobbly and can't really feel great confidence in Chuck Hagel in the role as, as uh, Secretary of Defense, when you look at his long history and his statements uh, in the past, he continues to contradict uh, himself, and I don't think he's the right choice as Secretary of Defense. But do you believe he will be confirmed? Well, that's, it, we're still looking for more information. We've suggested as Republicans a number of uh, additional uh, speeches that we want to read that he's given, uh, sources of income that we want to delve into to see who's been uh, paying his bills, and we're still looking for that information. Do you agree with critics who say that it is unprecedented, the kind of information that you, you have been asking for, that oh, no, no nominee that. previously has ever been asked to, to provide the depth and breadth of information that you're, that you're requesting? This is somebody who's going to be advising the president of the United States on using force, sending troops to war. It's important that the secretary of defense be somebody fully vetted. I still have significant questions about uh, Chuck Hagel's uh, 
ability to do this job, and I want to make sure that the American people get to know for sure if he is the right choice. I believe he is not the right choice. I plan to vote against him. Senator John Barrasso, thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks for having me.